hello everyone today we are going to discuss one of the most important pillar of the clinical research that is the ethics committee ethics committee is one of the most significant aspect of the entire clinical research because ethics committee is the guardian of subject safety rights and well being and they play a very important role in protecting it so in this particular video let us understand what exactly is ethics committee what are its function how the ethics committee is prepared what are the members of the ethics committee and understand their role in clinical research and why it is one of the significant aspect of the entire clinical research without further ado let's start so in this particular video we are going to learn what exactly is ethics committee followed by the composition of the ethics committee or the institutional review board then we will see what are the ethics committee changes as per the new drugs and clinical trial rules of 2019 followed by the importance or significance of ethics committee in the clinical research landscape now first and foremost let us understand what exactly do you mean by ethics committee so ethics committee is a committee comprising of medical scientific non scientific members whose responsibility is to ensure that they protect the rights safety and well being of the human subject who are involved in the clinical trial okay which means that this particular uh, committee uh, provides a reassurance or they evaluate objectively and independently and in an impartial manner of whatever the trial comes before them and they are responsible for approving the protocol to ensure whether it is suitable to be conducted a trial on human subject whether the investigators facility or the methods involved in the clinical trial are suitable and also other significant aspect is the informed consent whether all the aspects that protect the sub subjects right safety and well being are covered and that are adequately in compliance with the confidentiality safeguards are ensured so that is regarding the ethics committee in clinical research now when it comes to ethics committee it is very important to understand what exactly is composition of the ethics committee which are the members involved in the ethics committee and how this committee involves different types of members and how they function so uh, the first member of the ethics committee is the chairperson now this particular uh, person is not from the institution he is non affiliated this chairperson can be any well respected person or scientist with a background and having prior knowledge of working in an ethics committee so that is your chairperson the second person is the basic medical scientist this particular basic medical scientist is again can be from the institution or can be non affiliated and this particular uh, medical or non medical uh, person that is the scientist would need to have qualification in basic medical sciences okay so that is regarding basic medical scientist now the third member is the clinician now this particular clinician should have qualification which are in terms of medicine whenever it is a drug trial then we have an expert in pharmacology who would act as well as people who practice medicine so those people the mbbs doctors the mds they can qualify for this particular position now the role and responsibility of this particular position is to evaluate from that particular angle for example if it's a drug trial to so the so the protocol would be evaluated from a pharmacology uh, perspective okay the basic medical uh, scientist would uh, go into the basic aspects of the entire molecule so that is uh, their function the third person is the social worker now this particular social worker is an individual with background in social behavioral philosophical or religious background so they need to have qualification in that and it would be preferable if he is involved in any kind of ngo which is involved in health related activity okay so that is another member followed by the legal expert so the legal expert is uh, someone who should have a basic degree in law from a recognized university and needs to have uh, experience of practicing law and this uh, particular legal expert is preferred if he has training in medical law because he can competently uh, explain the exposure of uh, any kind of legal activity in the in that particular protocol the next person is the lay person now lay person does not mean that that person cannot uh, read and write or that person is illiterate but that person uh, is literate needs to have a graduation degree and a person need not have a medicine degree or not pursued medicine in the last 5 years this person provides a perspective that is not 
medical and connects from a standard point of view okay so whatever the perception are of a normal person who is understanding a drug trial so this particular person plays an important role next person and the critical person is member secretary now member secretary is the staff of the institution so that is affiliated to the institution and has knowledge and experience of clinical research and ethics in clinical research and they are motivated to have a good communication skill set because it, uh, member secretary is the focal point of the entire committee and member secretary organizes all the uh, ethics committee meetings uh, all the documentary work okay all the uh, approvals uh, notifications so it all goes through the member secretary so member secretary position is very critical so if you understand that if you look at the entire committee then you would understand that there are people from diverse background not only from medical background but also from non medical background such as the legal expert lay person and the social worker and these particular people provide a comprehensive view when evaluating a particular protocol for a clinical trial now let us understand that uh, there is a system called as quorum so whenever you review a particular protocol you need to have at least minimum 5 members that are present in the meeting so that you can approve a particular protocol so these particular members include a scientist a clinician a social worker a legal expert and a lay person so whenever you have to approve a protocol you need to have a quorum and that quorum needs to have minimum 5 people these are from a lay, a lay person legal social clinician and the scientist okay so basic you need that also this particular ethics committee needs to have a gender diversity okay and at least 50% of the member should be female okay we will look at the changes of the ncd rule but this is uh, regarding ethics committee so whenever you go to an interview or you have to uh, prove your knowledge regarding ethics committee understanding the composition is very critical because it will show your understanding of the entire ethical landscape of clinical research now let us understand what are the function of the ethics committee so first and foremost they review and approve the clinical trial protocol which is the which then follows through the drug trial they also review the suitability of the investigator the facilities involved at that particular hospital and whether they are protecting the subject right safety and well being the next function would be that in case of any serious adverse event whenever the subject is under drug trial he will have adverse event and the serious adverse event so to evaluate whether these are related to the drug or not and whether the right safety is protected that is also a function of the ethics committee and ethics committee also time to time reviews the progress of the trial through the uh, quarterly updates and they ensure that the trial is following the ethical guidelines and having compliance to safety so these are the functions of the ethics committee now let us understand that what are the changes to the ethics committee or the institutional review board as per ndct 2019 so new drugs and clinical trial rules 2019 made a significant changes Uh, to the ethics committee the first of which is that now form ct01 is to apply for the ethics committee and when you get in approval for ethics committee that is from form ct02 so whenever you evaluate a clinical trial they need to have an approved ethics committee that would be form ct02 next thing is there were changes in constitution of the ethics committee and now it has been made mandatory that at least at least one uh, woman must be present out of the seven member ethics committee there should be at least one woman preferably there can be 50% uh, member from the external and they should be uh, stratified across the age and gender so at least uh, 50% of the member should be from outside the institution so that we can ensure there is impartiality the next change is that uh, any change to the ethics committee should be notified within 30 days of that particular change and any member who has not completed the ethics committee training can be disqualified so ethics committee member need to comply to the trainings also so this is the significant changes uh, to the constitution of the ethics committee next thing is now they have increased the validity of the ethics committee from 3 years to 5 years and the ethics committee approval uh, from the central licensing authority that is dcgi would be granted within 15 working days finally if the site does not have its own ethics committee and this is one of the significant changes then they they can obtain an approval from an independent ethics committee or a uh, ethics committee or another ethics committee that is located in the same city or within the radius of 50 kilometers so again this particular aspect is uh, 
significant because a lot of hospitals would not have their own ethics committee and to make ethics committee again then that's a difficult uh, a task to do so they can choose to have a different ethics committee uh, which is in the radius of 50 kilometers so this is the significant changes of ethics committee as per ndct 2019 now let us understand what are the importance of ethics committee and first of which is review so ethics committee is the committee which is playing a significant role in reviewing the study protocol after central licensing authority this is the second committee which ensures sec uh, second layer of protection to ensure the protocols are carefully uh, approved reviewed and whether the informed consent at the start of the clinical trial has proper guidance and safeguards to protect the subject right safety and well-being second thing is the benefits now ethics committee also evaluates whether this particular trial would benefit a subject are there any risk present and risk to benefit ratio is justifiable so that is again an important function of the ethics committee followed by safety now you need to understand that ethics committee does not care whether the molecule works or not whether it is uh, efficacious or not but their concern is regarding subject safety so ethics committee would ensure that the subject is safe his rights are protected and his well-being is maintained throughout the conduct of the clinical trial that is one of the significant uh, aspect of the ethics committee followed by the responsibility so they serve as a representative of the study participant in front of the sponsor as well as the society and community at large and focus on ethical concern of the clinical trial and subject safety so you would understand whenever it comes to ethics committee there would be different uh, point of view and most critical would be to ensure subject right safety and well-being So thank you for watching this video till the end please make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that we can bring you amazing fundamental concepts of clinical research and improve your knowledge thank you